Let us start with this particular subject, SPA, which stands for Structured Programming Approach. What all we are going to study in this particular subject and how as a student I am supposed to continue this particular subject. All this will be dealt in these future sessions. Basically, in this subject, we are going to study a computer language. We have already acquired basics of various languages, which we generally use for communication. Communication with our friends, with our teachers, with our neighbors. Anyone who want, uh, who want me to communicate or who want I to communicate, we use language as a medium. The basic purpose of language is to make the person to whom you are communicating understand your feelings or your emotions. That is the basic purpose of human languages. Now, what is the difference between a human language and a computer language? Human language can be used for performing a task or making the other person to understand my emotions, my feelings. But when I say computer language, a computer language is basically used for getting a mathematical task done by the system. Now, when I say a system, a system doesn't understand the human languages which we generally speak, say English or Hindi or Marathi or whatever the language which you say. I had to make this particular system to understand in its own language. This system has been designed to understand many languages like basic Pascal, C, C++, Java and so on and so on and so on. Out of these N languages, this subject deals with one basic computer language called as C language, which can be treated as fundamentals of programming language. If someone wants to start with the programming concepts from the scratch, then probably we are going to use the C language as the base. So this subject tells you the fundamentals and some high end concepts of this particular language. When these languages teach you, they teach you two things. One, the syntax part and other, the implementation of that particular syntax. For example, if I ask you to study English language, so no one teaches you a word or a paragraph on day one. It all started with our kindergartens when we were said with some uh, slanting lines, standing lines and sleeping lines. So then those were made to construct some alphabets and those alphabets were framed to words. Those words were framed to sentences and those sentences were framed to paragraphs. In the same process, every language has got some learning process. You'll have a C language learning process, which will be said in the later stage also. So question comes, why do I need this particular language? Basically, I need this language so that the system gets some mathematical task done for me. That mathematical task can be a simple task, say addition of two numbers. That mathematical task can be, say, area of circle, a geometrical task. Or it can be a high-end mathematical task like finding multiplication of two matrices or finding determinant of a matrix or a transpose of a matrix or reading a set of statements and identifying the number of words in that or finding the number of vowels or consonants and so on and so on and so on. You specify a task and using a language, we can very easily get that particular task done by the system. That is how we all go about this particular subject. Now, subject is kept aside. Now, for a while, leave this particular subject. What do I need to get this particular programming done? I need a basic computer. When I say I need a computer, obviously, that computer is nothing but a hardware. Who thought of this particular hardware first? What was the evolution of this particular system? So, in this video, we'll see how this evolution went about. What was the basic model which was stated? Let's see the very first basic model of this particular system.